name is Deanna. I am the Director of Product Training at Worldbook, located in Chicago. I'm happy to be here to you today to talk about some of the resources that you have available through the Michigan eLibrary. Um, before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to drop those at any time. I'll be happy to answer them as we go. And secondly, uh, I was a teacher for many, many years before I started teaching, so don't be afraid to interrupt me at all. Number three, make sure at your library you are aware of our webpage graphics and widgets that you can easily download to your library's webpage from worldbookonline.com, which is your super homepage. You would go to forward slash tools. And that would take you to your account homepage. From here, you can look at these really easy to download web page graphs or widgets on the upper right hand box. So, for example, in Michigan, you guys would look specifically for the one for Early World of Learners and EEH, and you can download those right to your institution's web page. We also have these great web page widgets as well. And depending on how your uh, site is built, we have direct web page links as well. Okay, all of that being taken care of, we are going to talk today specifically about early worlds of learning uh, and world book kids. I'm going to spend just a few seconds in EEH, also known as Encyclopedia Estudiantil Hyascos, which is our primary language database for your. Um, English language learners or any patrons who come in and are seeking information in Spanish. So Early World of Learning is our database, really ideal for that pre and emergent reader. I'm going to turn my volume down because everything is written out loud for me on this, is read out loud for me on this screen for that pre and emergent reader. You'll see that there's only one small item that is not read out loud. Uh, as we go, and I will make sure that I point that one out to you as well. Each of these six modules were really created around that early childhood and kindergarten curriculum to prepare our students and patrons for when they enter school. And I like to start with read. Read is broken down into two separate sections, Treks Travels and Welcome to Ring. Trex Travels is also available in Spanish, also great for that English language learner. It has 12 different stories, and we follow our World Book mascot, Trek, as he travels across the world learning these essential childhood themes like shape and taste and color and smell, opposites and sounds, and he also learns some really important social emotional lessons. Each story is also matched with the games and our database that are associated with those stories, as well as different images and videos. For example, this very first story is Trek Learns to Fly. You can see that it's matched here. Now, each of our stories have human narration with varying accents and uh, male and female voices. You can have them played uh, and tracked, the words tracked, by pressing the play button. I'll show you what that sounds like. Trek learns to fly. Trek was a scarecrow. He was made from. Oops, sorry about that. Trek was a scarecrow. He was made from three strong poles. One long pole and one short pole helped him stand firm in the ground. That gives you an idea. You can also turn the page manually and have that foundational tracking turned off. Now, these 12 stories are of a higher lexile. Uh, these, if you were to pull this physical book off the shelf, it would probably be too difficult for a pre and emergent reader to read that on his or her own. So these are really great for listening centers, uh, a change up on read aloud, kind of um, a book that I could picture a parent or an educator reading out loud with the child. On the other hand, we have Welcome to Reading, which is a guided reading program. Really great for both library programming with those struggling readers, tutoring programs, parents who come into the library looking for ways that they can help teach their kids to read at home or if they have a struggling child at home. So great to share with them as a librarian or a teacher. 
There are 12 stories in each level, A through D, and as you progress from level A through D, those obviously grow in Lexile. So I'm gonna quickly show you a level A, and then I will show you a level D. Trek and his friends. Trek's friends are lost. Where is Wagtail? Here I am. I am not lost. So you can see not a lot of words on the page, a lot of repetition, very, very low lexile. We'll go all the way up to level D. Now we've kind of moved on from Trek and we're at lend a hand, more social emotional skills here. And you'll see, I'm gonna turn right to the second page, get a lot more text heavy. Surprised at all the things you can do to lend a hand. Here are some things you can do all by yourself. You can help your family. You can set the table. Okay. So yes, a lot higher of a lexile, but still for that emerging reader, a lot of sight words, um, repetition, but now we've also added in um, some multisyllabic words as well. Now, each of these do come with different sets of lesson plans, and we're gonna go there before I show you the other modules. Um, at the footer of the page, it's a brown line across the bottom of the page. You can go to For Educators, and that will take you right to Educator Tools. And clicking on each of the logos will take you to their lesson plans. So first, we'll look at Trex Travels. You can scroll down to get more information about those early childhood themes that we chose, as well as the lexiles of the book. On the left in this grayed out area, these are where you'll find each lesson plan specific to each story. So we were looking at Trek Learns to Fly. Here we have uh, different skills and concepts that are suggested, a suggested vocabulary list, pre and post reading questions, some cross-curricular correlations. Remember I said Trek is traveling across the globe. And it even connects you with the games and the print and do activities that I'm gonna show you in a moment. On the other hand, we have Welcome to Reading. You can scroll down to understand the, that Lexile range. And we also now have each story, 12 stories in each level, broken down into these mini lessons. So this is great, especially for someone who is unfamiliar with how to teach reading. Uh, it, you're talking about the short vowel A sound, um, different sight words that you can focus on. Each welcome to reading comes with a really cute little foldable book. So if you are not wanting to read on a device, you can actually have that book printed out or have a book printed out to take home as a great make and take. And of course, we have some discussion questions and tuck the name of this story into the back corner of your brain for a second, the yam, the goat, and the leopard. This is going to be an extension story on that social emotional theme of friendship and companionship. Okay, to go back to the logo in any of our databases, you just click on, uh, excuse me, to go back to the homepage, you just click on the logo. I'm gonna briefly go through and touch upon these other modules. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory. The print and do activities are based on the stories and the lessons that we just learned. So for example, there are stories based on these childhood themes of colors, numbers, shapes, etc. So I can look at color if I just read a story about color and I have a handful of different printables that I can print out in Spanish and English. So great as an extension, a send home activity, um, also great for um, getting kids um, to work on these during center time. These really run the gamut from really simple to a little bit more complex. For example, here we have time. Now they have to draw trek in the morning and here they have to draw trek in the afternoon. They even have to write the time on an analog clock, which I know is kind of a um, becoming passe, but still a very important skill in my opinion. 
Watch is a compilation of short videos. I specifically want to show um, you guys as educators, these big ideas videos are really great for reinforcing a subject, teaching a subject. Um, you can even send these home. They are all downloadable. I know that when my fourth grade students came back after the summer, they had all forgotten what prefixes and suffixes were, for example. So we have these great short little videos just to refresh their memory. These would also be great to introduce that topic for the very first time. Prefixes. Did you know that you can change the meaning of a word by adding a few letters to the beginning? A prefix is a group of letters placed at the beginning of a word. Okay. We're going to go back up to our home page. Play are these four different games that most of us are pretty familiar with. I put my three and four year old um, godchildren in front of this and they were able to play it without me. They don't really need much help these days. So um, concentration is just matching pictures as you and I know from our childhood. Here they have to put the story in order. The important thing to know is that after they've read the story, they can come here. They can read the story if they haven't read it yet. Um, everything is read out loud to them, including the captions and the directions. So another great idea for a center after you've finished reading those stories. And finally, Know It is our introduction to this visual encyclopedia. Throughout our database that you'll see uh, as we move on to World Book Kids, we really have this dig leads to a dig, a uh, click leads to a click as the students dig through the pictures that they're interested in to find something they want to learn more about. So here they want to learn more about the ant. Everything would be read out loud if I clicked here. Everything would be read out loud and tracked, even these captioned quotation marks, question marks. The only thing on the entire database Oops, excuse me, let me go back there. That is not read out loud is it's a fact. Not to be forgotten, we have our cute little frog who turns into a handsome prince when we click on him. And this takes us to our classic section where we have access to different songs and nursery rhymes that most of us are familiar with from our own childhoods. Um, these are really great for transition periods, and these are also downloadable, so they can be sent home, sung with uh, diverse children's voices and accents. So here we have the Eensy Weensy Spider. I'll just give you an idea. Eensy Weensy Spider. <laughs> I love that those words are tracked as well. I know some teachers and librarians use these songs as transition time or cleanup time. Nursery rhymes is going to be very similar. And finally, we have the story corner by the uh, gingerbread man. The story corner is where you'll find that story that I told you to tuck into the back corner of your brain called the yam, the goat, and the leopard. Unfortunately, it's the very last one, so I have to scroll down to the bottom. So here we have the yam, the goat, and the leopard. This is a much text heavier story. Of course, you can download the audio. This is an extension on the social emotional theme from Trek and his friends when Trek uh, was learning about friendship and companions. So you can download this audio for longer car rides or as a modified podcast even and have um, page, young patrons can listen to this in long car rides or parts of it for story time. Okay, that is it for early world of learning. Do you have any questions for me? I'll wait here a second to see if anybody has any questions. I'll be happy to answer those. Okay, our next database that we have access to at our Michigan eLibrary is World Book Kids. World Book Kids is ideal for that elementary school learner. So if you have a, a patron who comes into the library, 
There might not be an elementary school yet, but they might be a very advanced reader. They could certainly benefit from the information and the games and features available here. You also might have a struggling reader who is a little bit older who could use um, some information at an easier Lexile, and they could come here as well. As you can see, we are we have built this database on these beautiful splash images on a carousel. So if students or patrons want to learn more about the hippo, for example, they could just click here in the middle and that will take them to the example um, to content on a hippo. We also have this beautiful features bar splashed across the bottom of the page, nice and bright for that young elementary school student. And at the top, we have our intuitive search bar we also have an explore bar. This is where that click leads to a click mentality is gonna come in. For that reluctant researcher who's not really quite sure, I don't know what I wanna learn about, I guess maybe sports, I really like sports. Okay, maybe gymnastics. And they can dig down and now they've narrowed that down to just seven different articles that they can choose from, from not knowing what they wanted to to begin with. That also includes pictures and videos as well and an advanced search where you can search by Lexile or do a Boolean search for certain phrases. I'll show you what it looks like to search for an article. We will search for Michigan. So I have 72 different items that will pop up based on that content search, including 16 pictures, maps, Let's look at the very first image. We're gonna go, we're gonna go um, and learn about these tabs at the top in just a few seconds. First, let me scroll down. You'll see all the multimedia on the left will match up with the text on the right. We have a double click dictionary. So any word that your user is not familiar with, they can double click and the dictionary definition will pop up. And after the article, when you're signed on in Michigan, when you're signed on to the Michigan Electronic Library, I should say, you can click right here to this orange toggle. That will take you directly to parallel content in Spanish if we have that article. So it will be parallel. It will just be a d direct translation into Spanish. So really great for those English language learners and any patrons who co might come into the library seeking information in Spanish. And we will also have um, citations at the bottom in MLA, APA, and Harvard format in each of our databases. Back up at the top of the article, uh, these five tabs uh, have a great amount of information in them. First, we, we have a compilation of all of that multimedia. And of course, the broader, the bigger the topic, the more information you're gonna have. Um, other articles that are connected to our content search, any games or activities that are from our features bar that are associated with our content search, and many of our articles end with comprehension questions. I like to think as, a, as an ex-teacher, I would have put my early finishers here and said, why don't you research something that you are interested in, something you want to learn more about, and then they can be engaged, have that student choice but then we are holding them a little bit more accountable for their, for their learning. And of course, we have quick links to our content standards, either by state, or we can also look by next generation science standards, common core standards, or IB standards as well. The tabs at the top right are gonna show you a Lexile measure as well as a linkable table of contents. And this gear drop down is how we can collaborate with our students or our patrons. All our articles can be saved, they can be downloaded onto the desktop or saved via Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive. They can be shared via email or Google Classroom. All of our text in our data in this database can be translated in over a hundred different languages. And it can also be read aloud, a really great way to differentiate for the various needs of our learners. If it's read aloud, however, it will only be read aloud in English. Some of the content is read out loud in EEH in Spanish, but not every article. 
Okay, I'm just gonna go through a few of my favorite features uh, from the features bar. The first being world of animals. This is a really great way to engage students and to teach them not only about the beginnings of research using a subject matter that they are all fully engaged with, but also um, teaching them that really important compare and contrast skill. So in world of animals, students can compare and contrast animals within their species or outside of their species. So for example, we could look at reptiles and we will compare the alligator with the crocodile, of course. Now from each side, I can go directly to the article on that animal or I can go to a quick exhibit of quantitative information, including any photos or video and audio. So here is a creepy alligator hissing, which makes me happy I live in the Midwest. Oh, it's not working. I think we should probably consider ourselves happy about that. I'll let our digital team know. But for today's purposes, we can compare now. And it pulls up this great modified Venn diagram with some visual cues as well for those patrons and students who are too young to understand really these numbers. But it pulls in a lot of math, social studies, English language arts, science even, if you're talking about carnivores, geography, when you're talking about where these two animals are more prevalent and where they're found, and even some fun facts towards the bottom. So even if you're not sure, you know, what 550 pounds means, you can see that the crocodile at about 2,200 2, pounds weighs a lot more than the alligator. A really fun way to engage students and to teach them about something that they already love. Similar to that on our features bar is compare places, which is this great globe Compare places will do almost the exact same thing, except for instead of comparing animals, you are now comparing geographic locations. Our database is full of great activities that can be done at school, in the public library, uh, at home even. Great to send home with parents who are looking for fun activities to do with their kids at home. Each section opens up into a larger subsection of activities. This was really done with the makerspace idea in mind. Um, most of the stuff can be done very inexpensively or with items found around the house. And they come with fun, easy procedures and pictures, as well as our gear dropdown, which means everything can be translated and shared. On a similar note, Back to our features bar, we also have a ton of science projects. With that same idea, each of these science projects is also going to have links to learn more about the different uh, subject matter. For example, you can go right into the database here to learn more about magnets, and they will come with discussion questions at the end. I'd also be remiss not to point out this important people section. This is our biography center. So students can search or patrons can search specifically for people that they are looking for, or this can also be used as a great differentiation tool. A teacher might want specific lessons on female, let's see, female civil rights leaders. Maybe they're doing a civil rights unit and they, would, they wanna focus on females and this will pull up about 30 articles on civil rights leaders throughout the world that I might not have been so familiar with. On the same hand, you might have a student who always wants to write about Rosa Parks as a civil rights leader. Well, here's a great way she can learn about some other powerful women who, who were essential in the civil rights movements throughout history and the world. Okay. I'm going to finish up down at the bottom here in our for educators tab at the, at the footer of the page. This will take you to educator tools. Again, another place to grab your curriculum correlations, lesson plans for any of those science projects, activities, or games that I showed you. And we also have access to these great web quests. These are expeditions throughout World Book Kids. They are print and do activities. 
So for example, if you are doing a unit on amphibians, or if a parent wants to come in and say, "We, I need some more homework to do with my kid at home, or they're struggling with their research skills, you can show them that they have access to this. So this walks them through the World Book database. It really prompts them through, and it has them read different content, watch different videos, and answer different types of questions. It even lets them play games, shows them the games in our database. If I scrolled all the way down, you would get to the answer key. Now, each of these uh, web quests are a little bit different. They all have different types of questions and activities, but they're all based on these really wide um, themes, which are really exciting. And we're always adding more, so be on the lookout. I know um, one of my coworkers just found a really timely one for voting. Um, which she was going to send out to her schools and libraries so that they could do that with their students and patrons. The most important one to point out, in my opinion, is the very first one, research skills. This teaches uh, the students how to use the World Book Database. It is that lesson before you start your research so that once it is time to do research, they already know how to use the database and what all the features that are there are available to them. Okay, any questions on World Book Kids? Okay, I want to finish by showing you guys two more things. We have our training guide. This is recently updated. It has a lot of great information on all of the databases. So if you forgot anything that we talked about today, you can come here and check that out, as well as some great video tutorials. You can um, promote your subscription in your school or library. We have some great bookmarks, posters and brochures. I'm scrolling all the way down to the bottom to show you these subscription letters, which can be sent home from schools or libraries to parents, letting them know that their student has access to these great resources, because we know that those kiddos don't always go home and share that information with their parents. And finally, I do public webinars throughout the week. I know most of you are busy working and working with kids or busy in the libraries with everybody. You're more than welcome to sign up for any of these that you are interested in learning more about. As long as you are registered, I will be sure to send you a recording of that session. I am going to pull up my contact information for you. You are welcome to reach out to me at any time with any questions about the databases. You also have a local educational representative, Mark, who is happy to answer any questions about any print questions you might have or any account questions you have. But you can reach out to me at training at worldbook.com. I'm happy to provide you a certificate for attending today, and I really recommend you check us out on social media. You will uh, see how different teachers and librarians are using us around the world, and it's, it's a great place to come also to learn about different specials that we're running. So I'll hang around here for a few minutes. If not, if there are questions, if not, I hope you guys have a great uh, rest of the week and a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it.